this video is very personal to me as I suffered from stage fright for a very, very long time. And every time I would look up advice or ways to handle this fear, I would get content that sounded nice, but it never really helped me when it came to actually speaking on stage. They would say things like, be confident or practice self-affirmations, breathe deeply or redirect your nervous energy. And <laughs> none of these things ever helped me. They all sounded too superficial. But if any of those points do resonate with you, you should try them out because you never know what works for you. And I'm sure there's a lot of content around those topics. But if you are like me and want to hear more, stick around because we're going to go over five ways that help us manage our stage fright that are surprisingly not spoken about that much given how effective they can be. Hey, my name is Radeep and I'm the founder of Frantically Speaking and I love learning about effective communications and sharing those learnings with you so that you can level up your communications game as well. So two things to get out of the way before we dive into the five points. Firstly, the most obvious way to get over your stage fright is to simply practice going on stage more often. The more we go on stage, the more familiar we get with it and the sooner we'll be able to actually manage our fear. Now that's very obvious if you have the opportunity to go on stage very often and practice in front of people, go for it. That's the straightest line to dealing with this fear. And the second thing to keep in mind is that stage fright is not something to overcome. Even though a lot of us might put it across that way, it's something that we need to manage. Confidence is not a black or white area. It's very gray and some people tend to handle this fear better while others take more time with it. So the key word here is to manage our stage fright, not aim to overcome it. The good thing is that we can still be incredibly powerful speakers and communicators. Some of the best speeches I've seen are from people who are inherently nervous before going on stage and many times you can see their nervousness on stage but they still deliver powerful talks because they have an idea that people care about and are intrigued by and that happened not because they overcame their fear but because they learned how to manage it. Okay, getting those out of the way, let's jump into the five points. The first two points are mindset oriented. The next two points are things that we can actually apply on stage. And the last thing is something that we can use in our everyday lives. The first point is to shift focus. What I mean by this is that the reason why we fear the stage is because we are only focusing on ourselves. What if I mess up my speech? What will people think of me? What if I'm not good enough to speak in front of an audience? Well, in reality, if we look at why public speaking began in the first place, it's to serve the audience. The only motive is to take an idea that we have in our minds and put it across in the best possible manner to the minds of your listener. And that's the only thing that our focus should be on. How do we add more value to the audience by making the idea that we want to communicate as comprehensible as possible? And when we shift our focus and start looking at it that way, that's when we stop worrying too much about things like body language or voice modulation and only focus on pure value. If we think about it in our own lives, if there's somebody speaking to us, whether it's just one of us or an entire group of us, and if we can genuinely see an effort in them that all they want to do is give us some sort of knowledge, information or entertainment, and they're trying their best to do so, we can overlook things like them not having the best grammar or them not having a great body language or stage presence. So that's the very first thing to shift the focus from us onto our audience. The next point is mental room. One of the most common things that people tell me when before I used to go on stage and I would be very, very nervous, they would tell me just breathe in deeply. And that breathing has its space. It does help a little bit. But right before going on stage, there are so many thoughts rushing through my mind and there's so much adrenaline in me 
that breathing only helps on a very superficial level instead what's helped me a lot more is to simply accept the fact that i am nervous right before going on stage when that feeling of anxiety is at its peak by telling myself i'm nervous of course i'm nervous i'm about to do something important it in no way makes the anxiety go away but what it does is it gives me the mental room so that i can figure out what i need to do next to manage the situation to the best of my ability as opposed to wasting my mental energy fighting this feeling or trying things like deep breathing which i know will not work for me okay now let's move on to things that we can actually do on stage that will help us manage our stage fright and the point that we're going to start off with is redirection tools Managing a fear of the stage is largely a game of familiarity. The longer we can be on stage, the lesser our nervousness will become. But that's difficult, right? Having those eyes on you and trying to engage with them constantly is not an easy task. So, how do we do that? How do we be on stage for longer while engaging the audience and moving our point forward? that's when redirection tools come into the picture it basically means to involve things like videos audience polls audience activities calling volunteers to the stage within our talks what these things do is that they allow the attention to move away from us without us going off stage and it still helps move our point forward while engaging with the audience if you are extremely nervous about the presentation you have coming up try to include some redirection tools they can be anything to do with the audience or adding in different forms of media like videos or audios that also help in making your entire presentation slightly different it breaks the monotony from you just talking without the attention being constantly on you the next thing that we can do on stage is eye contact now eye contact is something that everybody speaks about we have to have eye contact with the audience because that's how we connect with them and that's how they relate to us but i found eye contact the hardest thing to actually do when i'm giving a speech or a presentation earlier in my public speaking journey if i would look at anybody and they even had a slightly intimidating look i would just blank out on stage in fact eye contact is the thing that scares most of us in the first place to have so many people look at you and to have the pressure of looking right back at them instead of that a very simple thing to do which helps reduce that pressure and that feeling of nervousness is to not look at people but is to look at different points at the end of the room that you are speaking in when i look at the end of the room at three different points so that it gives the illusion that i'm looking at the entire room without looking at people it puts me back into my practice setting where there is no audience it's just me practicing my speech being as authentic as i can and slowly as i got more familiar with the stage i could start looking at the audience a lot more closely and eventually eye contact didn't become so challenging but initially it's probably the thing that scares most of us the most so this is a simple way to avoid doing that and kind of tricking our brain into thinking that we are not actually in front of an audience by not looking at any of them at all and the last point that i want to discuss here today is something that we can practice in our everyday lives earlier in this video i mentioned that the straightest line to managing our stage fright is to just practice public speaking as much as we can but of course that's not always possible but what we can do is to treat every conversation like it's a speech whether we are talking to our partners a group of our friends anybody on the phone to treat all those conversations like a speech is what helps us practice public speaking when i say treat every conversation like a speech i mean that when we are speaking to somebody we should try to be very conscious about the way we are communicating are our hand gestures complementing what we are saying with our words is our tonality very monotonous or are we taking a conscious effort to vary it all these things are things that we tend to pay a lot more attention to when we need to speak in front of an audience but if we can incorporate those principles into our everyday lives when we do go on stage this type of speaking will seem a lot more natural to us and it becomes almost second nature so speaking on stage or having a conversation 
doesn't seem that different and that helps us practice public speaking more and helps us come across more authentic when we do actually have to present in front of a crowd and that's about it five things that we can do to manage our stage fright if you have any more questions when it comes to things like communications or public speaking we have an entire website with in-depth articles and resources dedicated just to that so go check out franticallyspeaking.com